gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard. Very, very special episode. This evening, this evening we are celebrating the life and legacy of the legendary Mary Wilson. Um, on February 8th of this year, 2021, we lost a legend. We lost a lady who was a singer with the iconic group, The Supremes. She passed away on February 8th, 2021. In tonight's episode of the Sherrod Show, we are going to be saluting and honoring her life and her legacy of all that she's done for all the many years that she was a Supreme, as well as in the musical industry. Um, today's episode is brought to you by Essence Television. Essence Television is a new network for the Sherrod Show. It's actually my um, personal network. I'm so excited. And if you would like, um, definitely to subscribe or also to watch the episodes live like we are today, you can always download Essence Television or add it as a channel on your Roku device. It's Essence. You see it right on your uh, monitors, Essence, E-S-S-E-N-S-E, TV on Roku. And it also, um, you can always email us or you can hit us up tonight on Facebook. If you have any questions or comments, or if you would like to join in on the conversation, we have tons of celebrities that will be stopping by the show today to give their condolences, as well as their um, commemorative um, memories and most fond memories of Mary Wilson. Uh, for me, my most fond memory of Mary was having her on the Sherrard show back in 2015 at the Amoeba Records um, on Wilshire and um, on Wilshire Boulevard. It was her, it was uh, Frida Payne, as well as Linda Clifford, and that was the first time me meeting Mary. And it was wonderful having her on the show and also having a piece of history, the legacy. This woman um, was, the, one of the, was the founder of the Supremes. And her story is very interesting. The Supremes were an American female singing group. This the most successful group of all of the artists there in Motown. They originally started off as the Primates, in Detroit in 1959, but they were, they were so successful that they changed their names to Supremes. And um, their music was written by Holler, Dozier, and Holler. Holler and Dozier and Holler and uh, Reggie Dozier will uh, be stopping by as well um, to be on the show to talk about Mary Wilson. It's a very exciting time as well. And then also with the Supremes, very interesting fact is that um, there was, many, there was many members that changed out, but the original members was Mary Wilson, as well as Diana Ross, and as well as uh, Florence Ballard. They were the originals, um, but unfortunately, Florence Ballard left the group, um, and she died of a heart attack in 1976. But the group carried on, um, and adding members that will be joining us tonight as well, such as Suze um, Payne, uh, I'm sorry, Suze Green, as well as uh, Cherie Payne, the sister of the... Uh, iconic Frida Payne. So the Supremes have, have meant so much to so many and they're, they've sold over a hundred million records. Um, Baby Love to, to uh, Someday We Will Be Together to, and the list goes on. Um, I will be talking to different individuals about it as well as um, you will be definitely hearing from some big names such as Gene Chandler, uh, his son De France um, Forrest as well. We're gonna hear from again, Suze Green and so many are going to be talking about the legendary um, Mary Wilson. So it's a very exciting time. And, and we'll be taking questions from you as well, audience, so you can be able to talk about it as well. Um, again, we're very excited. And it looks like as I speak of her, she shows up on the Shiraz show as well. Uh, Suze, how are you? I'm good. Give me one second. I'm going to adjust my camera to vertical. Okay. okay, very good. And so also with the, um, it's wonderful when you, when you look at all of the wonderful people who have stopped by um, and who are stopping by to pay homage, it's best to give people their flowers while they're living. And that's what we aim to do on the Sherrod Show, but also celebrate their life in their passing. And that's what we're doing here on the Sherrod Show. So very exciting time. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel, the channel, the Sherrod Show. You can always subscribe to the Sherrod Show. Just click the link below. Watch the greatest episodes. You can watch them either on Essence Television. You can, you can listen to them on iHeartRadio. Or you can also go to my YouTube channel as well. As well. So we want to hear from you all tonight as well um, to know what is your most fondest memory of Mary Wilson? If you never even got a chance to meet her, what is uh, the song that you enjoyed the most um, from the Supremes? Like I say, but for me, as a young man, it was always um, Someday We'll Be Together by the Supremes. But there are so many, so it all varies, depends on um, what your preference is as well. One thing I want to 
Hi, Suzanne, you, you, you there? I'm here. Okay, I can I can hear you, but I can't see the beautiful face. Well, I'm not sure why. <laughs> I, let's see. Switch to active speaker. Oh, my goodness, there is the beautiful Sherry Payne. Hi, How are Sherry. You? Hi, Suze. Hi, Sherrod. How are you? <laughs> I'm okay. Good. Welcome to the Sherrod Show. It's been a long time, Sherry, but it's so glad to see you again. Yeah. You still look like you're in your mid-30s. Oh, my goodness. Well, I am. I figured. I figured. I figured. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I figured. Welcome. Oh, again. there I am. There you are. There you are. <laughs> Wonderful. For those who are just joining the Sherrod Show um, and watching this special tribute to Mary Wilson, I don't know if you know it, but these two late, lovely ladies are members of the Supremes. There's Suze Green as well as Sherry Payne, the sister of the iconic Frida Payne. How are you ladies doing this evening? Fine. And I'm, I'm just just to let me up in this cracker with something meat on it because I have to take a, a, a heart pill and, and I have to have food with it. I can't take it on an empty stomach. So I oh, ran out and got two crackers. <laughs> very good. Well, we'll start off with you, Suze. Um, Suze, tell us a little bit about what it was like for you the first day you got the call to be one of the Supremes. Oh, my goodness. Well, I, I knew it was happening. You know, I knew it was in the work. So it wasn't really a, that much of a shock to me because my mom was, um, was dear, dear friends with Bob Jones, who was the head of publicity at Motown. And he asked her if I would be interested in doing it. So she let me know, you know, almost immediately with one of her cryptic questions. Would you, would you ever consider being in a group like the Supremes. <laughs> she was like that, you know, she was good. But um, it was pretty, pretty wonderful. You know, I was in Wonder Love and Stevie Wonder's group at the time. And it was, it was kind of a, a difficult move for me because we were like family. We were very much like family. I mean, they're all still dear friends of mine. I spoke to Nate Watts, who was his bass player, mm -hmm. and still is, you know, mm -hmm. um, just a couple of days ago, because we have music business together, all of us. Mm -hmm. But I realized that show business is a, a hill that you climb, and it has, you know, levels that you get to. And I knew that the Supremes was something pretty wonderful. It was quite an honor. And I remember going to Mary's house the first time. I, I had met her years before when she, when uh, Jean had first started in the group. I met her in Washington, D.C. at the Carter Baron. So, you know, it was like, oh, <laughs> you, <laughs> you again, you know, that sort of thing. But she was, oh, let me just say, she and Sherry were very dear friends and still, and, and, Cindy Birdstone, Birdsong is still such a dear friend to all of us. But I know it must have been difficult for them because she was such a lovely lady and such a dear friend. But they welcomed me with open arms and they helped me to learn the songs. You know, there was a heck of a lot of material. You had all of these clothes to try on and you had to get the show together. It was, it was pretty intensive. But they were so gracious to me. I, I couldn't have done it without them. Of course, I couldn't have done it without them. <laughs> but, now, now, now we're going to bring you in in a moment, Sherry. Um, but now, okay. where was the Supremes when you joined? And what year was it that you did join, Suze? It was, that's a good question, isn't it? 75, I believe. 76. And was it 76? Right at the very beginning. The very, very beginning. Wow. See, your memory is better than mine. <laughs> but we were in L.A. You know, they were on the road. They were in Connecticut, I believe, and or Massachusetts. I can't believe which. I can't remember which. But they had to come into town. That was the point. And then, of course, I got together with them. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, we welcome in Joyce Vincent to the show as well. Hi, Joyce. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good. Now, I hear the lovely voice, but I do not see you. 
Nice to see you. Likewise. Uh, now, I think you just need to click your uh, stop start camera, and then we can be able to see you as yes, well. Yes, the top. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now, uh, while she's doing that here, Sherry, now mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about what it was like or your fondest memory of Mary Wilson. Oh, wow. First of all, I just want to make a correction. It was near the end of 90. I mean, sorry, 75 when Sue Say came. I remember <coughs> we were over to Eddie and Brian's house in Beverly Hills, and they brought this little okay. bitty girl in. I said, wow. I'm no longer the lady with the, <laughs> the big voice, little lady with the uh, big voice. Yeah. She is. <laughs> but anyway, um, my fondest yeah. memory, of, a memory of Mary. Wow, there's so many things. <laughs> oh, I can't even begin yeah. to name them because uh, we had so much fun. I mean, the. Uh, Someone sent uh, pictures of us when we were in Mexico City. This is when, was when Cindy was with us. This is in 74. And we took pictures on the pyramids there, and the police came. We <gasps> 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 almost took <gasps> pictures. Ah, and I remember <laughs> our underwear, it was a, our bras, boy, blown <laughs> off the wind. And, 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 so, and then the police came, and they made us come down. And, and we weren't arrested. Somebody said we were arrested. We weren't arrested. But anyway... <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> but Mary did you know, big news. <laughs> I sure would have been. <laughs> yeah. But, but Mary was such a, a go getter. She didn't let anything get in her path that would hinder. I mean, the Supremes were, uh, was her life. And you could tell it. She put everything into it 200%. And she wanted everything to be yes, perfect. True. So true. As the Supremes were that so what they true. represented was perfection and class, especially for young black girls. Uh, elegance. I remember the time even before that when, uh, 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 say, like in the fifties, in Amos and Andy or somebody, whatever, and I would run in the kitchen where she, my mother was cooking. Said, mama, Mama, call it people on TV. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, 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 Sherry. Um, how were you able, and this is for you as well, Suze, and Joyce, we're still waiting for your camera to show so we can see the lovely face. Oh, yes. yeah. Up at, the, up at the top, Joyce. Up yeah. at the top of the sc your screen, it will say, oh. turn camera, something about camera up there. Start video or something. Yeah, like view. Oh, view. view. Yes, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, now um, I'll start with you, Sherry, first. How were you all able to handle not only being the most successful female group in Motown, you were the most successful act period, in Motown. How were you able to be able to handle that success coming into all those expectations? Mm. Very gracefully, I guess. Uh, um, mm. It was so overwhelming when I first came. I remember when Cindy Birdsong picked me up at the airport. We went straight to Mary's house. This was in 73. Straight to Mary's house up in the hills and so put my suitcases down and we started rehearsing. That was on a Saturday because I didn't know the following Saturday they had a gig in New Mexico State at the State Fair. I said, dang. Wow. Wow. I had a lot to learn. Uh, I didn't have a chance oh to my gosh. Learn. I had to plunge right on in there and, and get busy because I did not want to disappoint. I had to live up to that image. But of course. That's a big mm. image to uh, fill. But I hope I did it well. Mary was pleased. So... Wow. Now, now, we're still waiting for you, uh, Joyce, because we want to get you in on the questions as well. Oh, and, we're, yeah. and we're welcoming from the Isley Brothers, Chris Jasper. How are you, sir? Good. Oh, I Good. Uh, Hi. I can, Hello. I can, um, I, I can hear you, Chris. I can't see you. Chris was on, actually on his show um, a few months ago. He had a fascinating interview as well. You can see that on Essence Television um, oh, as well. Chris is a gentleman and a scholar and one heck of a musician oh, as well. All right. Um, now, um, while we're waiting for Joyce as well as Chris to um, join us visually, now, Suze, for you, walking into a group that has already sold millions of albums and everybody was chanting Supreme, Supreme, Supremes, what was it like for you joining into the group then? Well, what can I say? You know, you know, you're very aware that something like that is a big deal. But I've been in show business all my life as well. You see, since childhood, I had, was training. I was going to specialized schools. I went to the School of Performing Arts for a drama, majored in drama. And, and when I joined the Supremes, I had already sung with Ray Charles and had worked with Stevie Wonder for years and was writing and had a hit record and all of that sort of thing, you know, free. I wrote free. 
uh, along with Denise Williams. But it was really a major big deal. You know when something is extra special. I can't put it any other way. And it was absolutely that. I, uh, you notice immediately, you know, everything's first class. Everything is, mm -hmm. is marvelous. You know, people treat you like you are made of glass, <laughs> basically. And, Very and gently. It was, you know, it, it's a, a champagne and caviar lifestyle. What can I say? Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, you, uh, yeah, Susan, it looks like you like a lot of caviar and uh, champagne. Is that correct? <laughs> Susan well, doesn't drink. drink. I don't drink at all. Susan does not drink. <laughs> I just want to interject one thing about Susan. Susan was the voice on New Birth Song until it's time for you to go. Oh, wow. That's Very right. Much. That was Susan singing. Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Now, um, I'm going to kick it over to you, Chris, but first, before I do, DeFrance, the son of the iconic Gene Chandler, how are you, sir? I'm good, good. How are you? Good. 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 I'm good. Welcome good. again good. to the Sherrard Show. Uh, Hi. I had, to, had the honor of having him on the show last week. You can also see his episode on the Sherrard Show at Essence Television. I hope you liked your episode, your interview, DeFrance. Did you like it? I liked it very much, so thank you so much for having me. I appreciate that so much. We'll get you in a moment. Now, Chris, how are you, uh, Mr. Emperor of Music? How are you, sir? I'm doing very good. Very good. <laughs> Working on music as usual. As usual. Now, tell me, Chris, what is one of your most fondest memories of Mary Wilson in the industry? Oh, wow. Uh, well, Mary and, 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 you know, Dinah, I mean, all of them. I mean, uh, I grew up, you know, loving Motown. And um, the Supremes, of course, they were the top you know, group. And, you know, I, I listened to all of that stuff because I, I grew up as a kid listening to Motown, you know, um, and Ray Charles, um, Sam Cooke, and Marvin Gaye, of course, he was another Motown artist. But the Supremes were special. I mean, they had so many hits one after another. And uh, it really had an effect on me. It really influenced me a lot. Get your cursor to the bottom. Even though my song now, um, you know, that was the era where, I mean, music was, it, you were singing to an era. I mean, for me, like I say, and the audience will be chiming in and give you their favorite Supreme down. song. But for me, someday we will all be together. I just love that song. Mm -hmm. My mom got me on it. That was just unbelievable. But, you know, you talk about baby love. You know, don't get me dancing. Be <laughs> they really, you all really can get yeah, down and we thank you for what you've done in terms Hello. of music. Hi, Joyce. There you are. How are you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm How's good. everyone? Every, I'm hey. good. I'm oh, good. Appreciate it. Thank, you for, being, thank you for being on the yeah. show this evening. Uh, Joyce, I'm going to kick it to you because you've been waiting there as well. Uh, tell, us okay. a little bit of, let's, tell us a little bit about what it was like for you when you became a Supreme. Oh, it was so awesome because I've been, you know, being from Detroit, as I am and Sherry is as well, I grew up with that music, so it, you know, it was almost like second nature, because I'd been singing along with it when it came on the radio, and you know, been around it all my life. So, um, when I, when Cherry and Suse approached me about working with them and singing this material, it was like second nature for me, <laughs> you know, so yeah, I, I love it. And we I don't go as the Supremes, we are Sherry and Suse. Formerly of the Supremes. Yeah. With Joyce Vincent. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes oh, but let me, let me interject here about Joyce actually was our choice. Once the name Supremes, once Mary left the group mm -hmm. and, and the name was licensed to us, Joyce is whom we chose mm -hmm. to be in the Supremes. Mm -hmm. And then something happened, of course, and things didn't go quite that way. But... Almost 40 years to the day, wow, Sherry amazing. called me and asked if I would join her and Joyce in the group. Mm -hmm. So there we are. The destiny of us singing it yeah. together is Isn't so that... strong to us. And we wow. just adore Joyce. We, yeah. we love Joyce. We love working with Oh, them. thank you. Love you girls, too. Good. Now, in 86, it was Jean Terrell, Linda Lawrence and I, who were the former ladies of the Supremes, we were going by yes. the acronym F-L-O-S. Mm -hmm. And then people just kept saying, are you the flows? Or they wouldn't mm -hmm. say just F-L-O-S. And so, um, but anyway, and then Jean stayed uh, for, what, several years, and then she left. And then, um, 
So, uh, uh, I lost my train of thought. I'm a senior. I'm entitled. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We'll, we'll come back 76. to you. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to you, Sherry. I want to get DeFrance in here. Now, DeFrance, you, you probably weren't born when the Supreme started, but um, I'm sure your dad has a lot of fond memories. Now, with you, when you got on the scene and arrived on the scene and started listening to Supremes, what did Mary mean to you as well as what did the Supremes mean to you? Uh, Mary always seemed like a vibrant, ready-to-go person. Uh, even when I met her, she always had a lot of joy. She was ready to have fun. And, and when you exude that on stage, the people feel the same way, and they, and they have fun also. So every time I, see, I saw Mary uh, over, over the years, she was always vibrant and ready and, and, and a, a bunch of joy. You know? And I appreciated that, you know, because sometimes you meet people and, and they don't have a, such a good attitude. That's and I was, I was very, very happy to know that, that, that she was that way, you know, and uh, Suzette, Suzette and uh, Sherry the same way, you know, uh, they're ready, you know, and <laughs> <laughs> you're ready to make it, make like it smile. You know, <laughs> that's what, that's very good. I'm now, now Chris, to make it smile. Say it again? Now, I'm, I'm going to kick this to Chris because, and this is for both of you, the France, that we're going to throw back, back to the ladies. Now, Chris, being with the Isley Brothers and being in it with a group, large groups, uh, groups that, you know, where everywhere you go, you know, you're always traveling as a group. And when you get paid, you get paid as a group. But how is it, what's the, some of the challenges um, that's so commendable regarding the Supremes in terms of staying with a group when you become successful? Yeah, that's, that's, uh... mm -hmm. I think it comes to personalities, you know, it comes down to personalities, you know, how, how well do you, you know, get along with each other, how well do you work together, you know, because uh, you do have to consider everybody when you make a decision, you know, um, and a lot of times that's what we did when we decided to go on the road, you know, we would sit down and say, okay, you know, what, what does it, how do everybody feel about, you know, going here, going there, going to this place, so uh, a lot of decisions are made you know, collectively together. And, and I think that's, that's something that all groups have to do, you know, and uh, yeah. some of them, you know, they, they, they butt heads, you know, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes. I mean, we did, too, we did sometimes too, but um, it's, it's, uh, it's looking at the big picture that helps people stick together, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Realize, mm -hmm. you know, what they're trying to achieve, the goal yes. they're trying to accomplish. Right. Um, it's uh -huh. easier to, you know, compromise sometimes, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, one one side will give a little, the other side will give a little sometimes, you know, and it's, it's, it's kind of a negotiation sometimes. Mm -hmm. Now, I was but speaking to Skyler. I was to keep the, uh, mm -hmm. the goal in mind, you know, keep, keep the goal in mind. Now, now, keep that thought, Chris, because I was speaking to Skyler Jet. He was on the show a couple weeks ago, and um, he was the gentleman that replaced, of course, Lionel Richie from the Commodores. Mm -hmm. But when he was, uh, he said, when he began to tour in other countries, you know, they didn't let the group know that Lionel Richie was no longer there. So when they got to the airports, everybody was looking for Lionel Richie, and they told him, the group told him to get in the back because we don't want them to know that Lionel Richie isn't there until we get to the uh, to the performance. Now, mm -hmm. my question to you, and I'm going to ask each of you all individually, starting with you, Sherry. Okay. Um, what was it like when people were yelling for Diana? And she was no longer with the group. Oh, that happened. I remember in uh, New Mexico, we were walking into the <laughs> backstage of the state fair, and they were yelling, Cindy May, Diana, Diana. And I'm looking like, where? <laughs> but thank you anyway. <laughs> happened a lot. You know, they just saw a brown face. <laughs> Oh, that's Diana. Okay. <laughs> I just smiled and kept on going. <laughs> Mm -hmm. now, now, what about for you, Suze? How was that for you when they were chanting Diana, um, looking for well, her? I, I have to admit, by the time I was in the group, people didn't have that expectation so much, you know. But I just, I think back, and some of the most joyous moments with me, for me, rather, I think about, you know, it's, it's pretty hard to travel. We were on the road 11 months the first year I was in the Supremes. And it's tough. You know, it's tough physically, spiritually, the whole thing. But, you know, rumors kind of fuel disagreements as well, it, especially, I think, in the Supremes. 
And a lot of people like to think that we didn't get along and there was this and that and the other. But I just have to say, you know, we'd get in the car in the morning and to shoot the breeze, we'd be so glad to travel and be together. And we had a ball. Mm -hmm. And the thing I love about those two ladies and these two ladies right here <laughs> is that when that music comes up, they're ready to go. They really, they, they have such passion for the music. And they are professionals and, and troopers, you know. So the show must go on, regardless of how, you know, your leg can be hanging off halfway. <laughs> but the people <laughs> yeah. came to see a show. <laughs> and that's what I always loved about working with Sherry mm -hmm. and Mary and with Sherry and Joyce. They love what they do. We have yeah. a great time together. We are, we're all there for it. Mm -hmm. now, now, for you, Chris, what about you? you? You being the man that did most of the writing for the Isley Brothers and the hit songs and things that we listen to today, but when you get out on a concert in the road, they're yelling for Ronald Isley. How was that for you? Uh, that, I, I never uh, cared about that very much. You know what I mean? The, um, the, the fame part of it. Uh, because, you know, as a kid, I was, um, I was kind of trained to be a composer, a writer. You know, um, mm. the, the most important thing to me is, is the product right? Is it, is it, is it up to standard? You know, yeah. um, that's the main thing I was always concerned about. I wasn't concerned about being in the spotlight, you know, but when I was, you know, it, it was, it was okay. You know, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just, you know, <laughs> I find a lot of times, you know, people, when, when they, when they create the spotlight, I, I wonder about that, you know, sometimes because, you know, it's not about the appearance. It's about the music. Right. You know, if you don't have the music, you're not going to, you're not going to show up anywhere. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. So yeah. it was always about the music to me. And as long as the music's right, I'm fine. I'm okay with, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what about That's you, right. DeFrance, uh, being the lead singer for the originals and um, performing all over the world? Um, does it affect the group? Um, when they're calling for you, or I'm coming here to see DeFrance, or the group sees it all as being part of one unit? The good thing about the originals, the way Marvin produced them, everybody sings lead. So you have your chance to shine, and then just when you do your part, you do your part. You, you rehearse well, so that way your show will be well. Yes. And, and I, I'm, I'm, just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm at joy all the time because I'm around professionals. Hank Dixon and and Jim Gilstrap, and then Terry, we both, Terry Dixon, we both grew up in the music. So we've seen, we've seen our dads on the road. We know we got to be on time up to the stage. Mm -hmm. We know, you know, oh, we have yeah. a amount of minutes on stage, you know, yeah. and you follow that with the motor once, you know, so I learned a lot throughout the years. So I know how to conduct myself when we're on the road. You know, I don't mess up the hotel room. I don't, you know. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Thank God for that. Oh, yes. 12 minutes, 12 minutes, you know? Because every minute you're late, if, when they do a concert, every minute you're late, that costs the promoter a lot of money. So yeah. Pay for sure. everybody, the whole staff and everything. So they say, this amount of time, you do that. And they love that. They say, oh, we gonna, let's hire them again. They listen to what we said. They could have went on yeah. and went over. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know? Oh, yeah. Um, so I just... I just make sure when we rehearsal, we rehearse what we're going to do on stage. We sound good in rehearsal. We do the same thing, um, you know, when we get to the stage. And being that Hank Dixon is the, is the OG, I listen to him a lot, you know. we might I might want to do something, but if he says it goes like this, it goes like that, you know. And I do my mm -hmm. part, I, you know, and I do what I'm supposed to do. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm grateful, you know. And the friend did it in so well from the very beginning, the yes. very beginning. Thank you. Now, now, let me get Joyce in, and then um, I'm going to. My audience has a lot of questions for you all as well, and I have a couple of more as well. Joyce, what about you? For you, when you uh, came into the Supremes, um, and they were hollering for D D um, Diana, or maybe they weren't. But how was you? How were you able to accept it when um, knowing that there's so many people just coming to see or hear one particular artist? opposed to the whole group. You know, I accept it just fine, if that is the case. But, you know, it, as you said, I came in later on down the line, so they kind of knew that, you know, Diana's not going to be there. She hasn't been mm -hmm. in a long time. And, you know, I was just there to help these ladies keep that legacy alive. It's, you know, it's beautiful all over the world. Mm -hmm. And um, it is accepted 
everywhere. And I believe that it really doesn't matter who's singing it. It's just that the music is good. Yes. Now, now, is what, all you know. Goldfield will never be another Mary Wilson. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. She, God rest her soul. She was a sweet, sweet woman. And, and really quick, my memory of her is when I had her on the show in 2015. It was your sister, Frida Payne, sure. Sh Sherry, as well as Linda Clifford. We, and them. they were all at Amoeba Records. And it was just so wonderful to have them um, both sitting on the show. The, the, screen, the picture is on your monitor of us sitting in that together. Um, and we're having a wonderful interview session and just realize that it'll never be a moment like that with such legendary individuals. But what would Mary want for us to do to carry the mm. I'll start this with you, Chris. What would Mary want us to do to continue and carry on her legacy? Wow, that's, that's, that's a tough question. I, I, mm -hmm. But I, I think what uh, she would want is for, you know, people to keep creating uh, you know, good music. I mean, that's that's what she lived for. You know, yeah. uh, just create, create, creating good music and um, something that will uplift people. You know, that's that's what I try to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, be positive. You know, be a positive yeah. force. You know, uh, in the world. Yeah. And um, I mean, that's that's what I think. I mean, I didn't I didn't know her that well, but the, the things that I do know. Uh, I think that's what she would want. Very good. And what about you, Joyce? What would you say Mary would want us to do to keep her legacy? Oh, I, I think just to keep that music alive, you know. Mm -hmm. And when you hear the music, you think of Mary, Diane, Florence, you know, everyone else that came down later on. So I think that she would want us to keep keep it going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about what about you, Suze? Well, you know the the Supremes represented not just the music, but they represented representation of young black women who were classy, who were clever, and able to reach out to the world in a way that had never been done before. They came during the time that civil rights was at the a very crucial point. Oh, yeah. And I think that, you know, the legacy was so important to, to Mary. They, they actually did something that hadn't been done before. Twelve number one hits is nothing to scoff at. Mm -hmm. And no one but the Beatles rivaled them in that. The thing about the Supremes, for me, it was a tremendous time for our people so that they could oh, see yeah. that just like everyone else, the opportunities that were given not to us were now available to us and we were able to handle it. We're able to rise to the occasion. Consequently, they met kings and queens around the world aside from everyone else. People followed them and I think that Mary would love the idea that their dream, her dream, was realized mm -hmm. and that we carry it forward to other generations and remind them just how fantastic it was and what a great, great legacy it was. And they mm -hmm. created it. Amen. Yeah. And we're going to touch more on that um, in a moment, um, what you're saying, Suze. Now, what about you, Sherry? Um, <coughs> what do you think Mary would want the most? Keep well, I concur with uh, Suze. Uh, Mary was all, always about uh, perfection and singing the song, singing them correctly, uh, our appearance, the class. We had yeah. fabulous gowns. Some of those gowns weighed 30 pounds. I mean, they were really, really heavy. But uh, doing everything with class and uh, uh, keeping that image, that Supreme's image all over the world. I mean, from a little girl in Detroit, me, uh, when I joined in the, uh, 73, yeah. It was just a dream come true because of Mary and uh, uh, Lamont Dozier, who introduced me into the group. Mm -hmm. and, um, but uh, that's what Mary would want. Every time I think of her, I smile. I smile. Because <laughs> Mary was always smiling, smiling, and, and just in there. We have to do it with, with class, everything with class. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was all about because we mm -hmm. had a, a, an image to uh, maintain. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was done so well. And when Jean Terrell came in the group, and I replaced Jean Terrell in '73, but everything was about class, 
and and just being on it. You couldn't do a show just haphazardly. Yeah, yeah, 100%, yeah. 100%, 100%, because yeah. that's exactly. what Gary was doing. That's right. That's right. She was proud of her legacy. Right well, there, so. And, and what about you, DeFrance? What do you think about um, what Mary would want to carry her legacy? Well, I think she would, I'm sure she would want everybody to exude the joy that she gave when she walked into a room. Uh, Motown, other than other, like other companies, they, they taught you everything, how to eat, how to speak, yeah. how, to, how to be a woman. She was already a woman, but they teach you how <laughs> these different things you need to know to be a professional. And, and I think she would want she would want the the, the new girl groups and, and 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 with Suzanne and Sherry, she want them to carry on the legacy in the same way in which they do, you know, because uh, we have enough negativity out there in the world mm -hmm. and where women are not doing what they're supposed to do and men men too, you know. So we need yeah. you know, we know for sure if you if you if you if you're acting like the Supremes, you're acting like a lady. So. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So she would appreciate that if they carried on the legacy that way, and I'm sure they will. Oh yeah, you know, you know, the interesting thing about it is that um, when black back then in the '60s, uh, '50s, '60s, even in the '70s, it was always big news when black people were on television. Ed Sullivan show, Michael Douglas show, The Tonight Show, yeah. all these things. Yeah. You stopped <laughs> and made sure when you heard that a black person was going to be on television, you made sure you, everybody was gathering around that television. Oh yeah, for right. prime time. <laughs> and it was a big, a small television, but they all gather around. What was that like for you all being on these various shows? Um, and I'll, I'll kick it over to you, Joyce. Ed Sullivan show, Michael Douglas show, The Tonight oh, Show, gosh. so on and so forth. As a surprise, it, it was wonderful. Oh. Wonderful. It was absolutely <laughs> wonderful. That's all I can say. Wow. <laughs> Hanging wow. out with these ladies and just be like they said, you're being treated like a queen. You know? So it's yeah. I love it. I, I absolutely love it. My yes. audience loves your hair, Joyce. They Lord, say your hair is absolutely beautiful. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely beautiful. We'll take the question. Thank what you. about for, what about for you, Chris? When you first were on national television performing on an Ed Sullivan and Michael Douglas show, um, I don't know if you ever were on the um, Nat King Cole show or anything of that sort, but what was it like being a black person performing in front of millions on prime time? Well, I, I remember, you know, the butterfly. Huh? But, uh, you know, because you, you don't want to mess it up. You know, it's, it's a big opportunity. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know this audience is, is, is looking at everything you do. You oh, yeah. Got you on the uh, mic you know, microscope. It you a minute to, you know, to get the butterflies out, you know? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> when you hit the stage, though, when it's really for me, when I hit the stage, it went away. You know, yes. it was anticipation. Y yeah. For me, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm thinking of, okay, let me... Let me let me make sure I hit the right chords. You know, <laughs> make sure I'm going to sing the right part. And so um, it was um, pretty nerve wracking before you went on. And, and I'll kick it to you, uh, Suzanne. What about for you? The first time when you got the call, we're going to be on the Ed Sullivan show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was actually on Ed Sullivan show with Ray Charles, uh, and my first television experience was really quite heady. I was. I was singing with Harry Belafonte, and I, I was maybe 14 or 15 in New York. So, you know, I mean, I'm a showbiz kid. And I, I, you don't realize the impact that it has until, I mean, now with the internet, of course, you get such feedback. It's wonderful mm -hmm. to find out that people are feeling what you're doing and, you know, right in there with you in those days you had to wait for snail mail you know for a letter from someone or for someone to recognize you who had seen a show i remember that the first show that i did with the supremes was soul train and oh. what you know i mean that in itself for me was pretty phenomenal because it was soul train you know <laughs> and then there we were i look at it now and I can I can see myself, you know, looking around, going, "Oh my god!" Mm. <laughs> but it's it's wow. wonderful. you know, it's wonderful. Show business 
is not for everyone. No, it but isn't. No, it isn't. Who are dedicated? No. You know, it's mm. it's quite a thrill. It's a wonderful. It night. really is. It really is. Mm. Very good. And uh, what about you, Sherry? Sherry, now your sister being free to pain. You know, she was um, in the limelight for many, many years as well, um, mm. doing wonderful things. Band the gold, bring the soldiers home, so on and so forth. So it seems like show business was always in the family. But what mm. was it for you like for you? Um, as, and we're running it right now. For example, in 1964, as you see a clip, um, Sam Cooke was on a Mike Douglas show. He just had um, another hit, and he was sitting there being interviewed okay. by yeah. Mike Douglas and a couple other people. And then um, the big hit for him at the time was Basin Street. So he went on there oh. and he was singing Basin Street. Okay. Um, but it was humongous 57 years ago to be a black man on a Mike Douglas show. So my question to you, Sherry, is what was that like for you to, to get the call that you were going to be on primetime television? Wow. Uh, well, you get butterflies, but then you have to step up. I remember our, my first show was the Sonny and Cher show, and I think it was January of 74. That was my very wow. first one. And then we went on. We did so many shows. Yeah. I never got to do Ed Sullivan, but I did everything else. Mike Douglas, mm -hmm. Merv Griffin, Dinah Shore, The, the Tonight Show, oh, Johnny yes. Carson Show, uh, Soul Train several times. You know, we did so yeah. many shows. So you just yeah. sort of get used to it and you just prepare for it Prepare for it and make sure you've got yourself together. Mm -hmm. You know what you're doing. And Can you're I just say, it. you know, yes. Joyce, along with, with Telma, and Tony Orlando had her own show, my dear. The first sure did. black or interracial oh, network. Oh, and that okay. was Tony Orlando and Dawn. Oh, that's mm. right. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now for DeFrance being the son of a legend, Mr. Gene Chandler, the Duke of Earl, mm. <laughs> we yeah. saw him many a times. On, on television in the 60s, the 70s, and things like that. So, DeFrance, mm. what was it like for you seeing your dad up there do, 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 do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It was a joy. I, I remember the first time he put me on stage with him at the Regal Theater in Chicago. I was about five years old, and oh. he took me out there. He said, this is, he said, this is my son, DeFrance. And everybody clapped and screamed. I saw all these lights. And I think that's when I got the entertainment bug. <laughs> and, then, and then after that, I think I saw the shy lights in South Bend, Indiana. But then I saw my dad several times after that. And it was such a joy. I didn't really realize how, how good he was until I got older. And I really, my ear became better. And I was like, man, this dude can sing. I'm like, this dude is bad. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so I was playing the amphitheater, the amphitheater at, uh, at the forum. I was like, man, this guy, <laughs> you know, as my ear got, got stronger and better and I could hear better. And, and I was like, wow, he's bad. And then, so, um, but I, I learned, I learned also um, that you have to rehearse because I've been around great groups like the Temptations. I saw them come off the road and they, they rehearse and yeah. I said, man, they, they, they sing it perfect. I went, what are they rehearsing again? But they were learning new steps. And like you said, you got to step it up. You got to, so you got to be ready so that you got to stay in shape. So when you hit that stage, it's like clockwork. You know, you know it's going to be good every time. And so uh, when I did Soul Train, I did Soul Train. Uh, that was that was a dream come true. Uh, I met Don Cornelius. Uh, he had a guest mm -hmm. at that time. He had uh, Holly Robinson Pete. And I wasn't worried about the performance because, like I said, we rehearsed a lot. And we were taught to do what you did in rehearsal, do the same thing on stage. Now, the talking part back then... I got a little nervous because they said, say, where are you from? I said, South Bend, Indiana. But actually, I'm from Chicago. And I was so nervous. I said, South Bend, Indiana. So that's what I said. So, but but South, I, I heard South Bend was on fire. When, they heard, when I said South Bend, they was like, their chest was sticking out. They was like, <laughs> they said, South Bend, my chest was sticking like this. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but as far as so, so now, I'm not, nervous to, I'm not nervous to speak or to perform. But. Mm -hmm. Always see my dad, you know, do his thing, and and that made me know that when you go out there, don't be nervous. You know, go out there and do what you rehearse. Mm -hmm. My mom told yeah. me that also, so that's why I'm not yeah. nervous when I go out and perform. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. wow. Now, um, ladies and gentlemen, this is our tribute to the legendary, iconic uh, Mary Wilson, who passed away on February 18th 
of 2021. And these individuals right. are her friends. These are some beautiful people who've worked with her, who've known her, who perform with her. They're giving their tribute as well as some wonderful stories about being with Mary Wilson as well as their career. And now we are taking your questions. And these are questions from the audience, just briefly for them um, to be okay. able to, to uh, ask questions to you all. Is, that, is it okay with you all? Take a few questions sure. from your hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Right. Great. Now, um, this uh -huh. first question is from Alan. This is from Alan, and he is from Wyoming. He says he is honored to be on the platform right now with these legends. You all are living legends. We appreciate that, Alan. His question is going to start first with you, Chris. Um, he said, Chris, his question is, what are you doing now um, in the industry, and how have you been able to, to stay so long in the industry over the years? Mm. I think I'll start from the second part of the question. I think I've been able to stay so long is because, um, like I alluded to earlier, as a child, I was, uh, you know, kind of groomed to be a songwriter and a composer. And that, that is really the lifeblood of the industry is, you know, the songs, the material. And that's, 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 that's what I've always concentrated on. And, um, you know, since I've been with, you know, with the Isaac Brothers, the group, you know, and then Icy Jasper Isley, uh, now my solo career, I'm just doing what I've always done. And it, mm -hmm. it just comes natural, naturally to me. Mm -hmm. And that's how I'm able to, you know, I, I've done 16 solo albums, you know. Wow. Uh, Bravo. You know, oh, well, I got a new great. single, you know, right now. I just released a new single. I mean, it's just a natural thing for me to write and produce music. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, it, I can't say it comes easy because it, it doesn't because you you know you never know what you're going to come up with but yeah, as long yeah. as you keep trying as long as you you know keep practicing you know you're bound to come mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's what mm -hmm. I do uh, so mm -hmm. that's how I, what was the first part uh, I forgot the first part and the first the first thing is what are you working on now first part what I'm, do you have I'm, coming up I'm working, I'm working on a new album like I said I just renewed the <laughs> I'm working on another album. This will be 17. I want to have it out in the summer. Uh, and um, I'm working on some very exciting projects. Uh, my son is an author. He's a lawyer first, but he's an author, and he's and he's he's writing books and he's and he's adapting these books to screenplays. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm working on music for the screenplays. Oh wow! Oh my goodness! It's oh, yeah. really some fantastic stuff. You know, it's it's um, one is like a Disney esque type of uh, uh, story. And another one is like an adventure story, you know. And I'm and I'm getting back into my classical kind of training thing, you know, doing orchestration and all that kind of stuff. So it's very exciting. Uh, two projects that I'm working on with him. Beautiful, beautiful. And we're going to get all the information of what you all are up to um, as we do, once we get through the questions. Now, this question is Mary. Her name is Mary Ann. She's from Oak Lawn, um, Illinois. And her question is for the Supreme. She said, I have always been a fan of the Supreme. She cannot believe she is on the platform with you all. And this is for any one of y'all. You can take this question. But what is it like for you all to hear your music some 40 plus years later on the radio? Ladies? Hmm. Well, as far as the original music, I was not a part of that because, as you know, I didn't join the group until 73. But uh, after that, uh, um, Music I did with Mary and Cindy, and then uh, when Suse joined the group, I think the last uh, song we had, um, I'm Gonna Let My Heart Do the Walking, was a, mm. a huge hit on the oh, disco yeah. chart. So when I hear, uh, hear that, and then Suse and I went on and did Partners album after that, but um, it just makes me um, proud that I was a part am a part of this legacy, although there are no Supremes, because Motown retired the name in uh, 78. Okay. And, uh, but uh, we are formerly of the mm -hmm. Supremes, mm -hmm. and uh, so we are a part of that legacy. But it just warms my heart when I hear even the, the, the old music, mm -hmm. it warms my heart. Because I still yeah, sing those songs. Yeah, sure do. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Joyce, we still yeah. sing those songs and, mm -hmm. and, and keep them alive. Yeah, yeah. That's right. The, what's you know, the magic of it all over the world no matter what country uh, yeah those people those fans that may not even yeah. english but they know those they they sure sure yeah. those songs a lot <laughs> but very good. You, you, good. You, you remember um in the movie coolie high baby love was playing when it first started you know and that, remember coolie high don't make me seem like i'm the only one up here that can remember <laughs> 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 yeah, coolie high, right? yeah. <laughs> that, that was yeah. the one 
that I was playing in the beginning. So it, yeah. just, it's just amazing yeah. how songs can just be an anthem for your childhood. All the way through. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 All right, we got time for one more question. This is for all of you all. This question is for Daniel. Daniel, who lives all the way in Portland, Maine. He says he is a bit of fan of all you all. You all are absolutely incredible. His question is, how, how, what is your perspective on music from now to back then? Do you still love it as much or are you more of a fan from yesteryear? Anybody can answer that for all of you. I think, you know, you, music is so much a part of all of our lives, you know, yeah. you, from the time you're a child, you, you hear songs and then through your teenage times, you have songs that even now, you know, it takes you there when you hear these songs. Mm -hmm. But when, you, when you've been involved with a legacy of songs and a legacy of music, you know, as right. a writer, as a producer, you you look at music and see what it was and what it could possibly become. I feel very blessed to have been involved in music. Our latest single, Unconditional Love, I wrote with Jeffrey Chen, who's a fantastic, fantastic keyboard player and arranger, composer. But you realize that a song that has a real melody mm -hmm. and has real lyrics is yes. something that's going to touch people's hearts. That's and true. that's, you know, that's a blessing. There's nothing else quite like that, mm -hmm. I think. And like Sherry said before, you know, you go around the world and people might not speak the same language that you speak, but yeah. we feel as human beings, we feel the same things. And mm -hmm. that's the magic of music. Mm -hmm. You know, Mickey Stevenson said to me, who was the first A&R man at In Motown, Motown mm -hmm. said, music is sacred. And I think that that little piece right there is somewhat missing. It's not as much to people to have songs of love. And, you know, when you write, I'm, I write love songs, for heaven's sake, you know. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so I'm convinced that love is a pretty special thing, a pretty special place. Yeah. You put it with music and people come to you and say, you know, that song inspired me to go on or that mm -hmm. song oh, yeah. made my mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. i named yeah. my child i had a baby because of that song. <laughs> yeah right right <laughs> you know? that's it. See, it it it's in people's lives mm -hmm. and in their hearts and souls mm -hmm. and that's what keeps you going you know that's what keeps you involved in it is your mm -hmm. passion your passion yeah. I agree. I, I think yeah. some of the song, a lot of the songs I hear now from the younger people, I'm missing. Like Suse said, back in the day, we had melodies. You could right. write a title and you could just start singing that song. But a lot of these songs now is like, dang. Yeah, they're just, just you know, know, melody, a medley of their songs. Right. Like they're little blurbs. Yeah, That's exactly. what I call them blurbs. You know, it's not yeah, a full okay, yeah. chorus and, you know, not full verses. And Yeah, it's like, But, dang, you know, they're... some of them are nice melodies. Yeah, they are. You, you know, know, I like right, the melodies. Yeah. yeah. But not yeah. like when, when we were coming along. No, the, um, nothing like that. that get back in the songwriting. Suse is one who encouraged me to start my songwriting again, which you I am should, going Sherry. to do. I am, but I had gone on another tangent the past few years, and I love it. I'm a screenwriter <laughs> and a stage play writer, and of course, you know. And a good one. Thank and you. And I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Quincy that. Quincy Jones came to my play at the Barnes Doll in Hollywood, <laughs> the Lady in Waiting. And I've been oh, trying yes. to get Sherry to get me in one of her plays, at least play a pickle. Sherry, I can't <laughs> at least play a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> But maybe one day, one day. Well, we're gonna have one last question, and then we'll close it out. Um, this is this is also from Lewis. This is from Lewis. He's in Missouri, actually. His question is for all of you all, really quickly. His question, very good one, is: Where were you when you heard, and what were you doing when you heard a change is gonna come? Let's start with you, Joyce. Oh, oh my God! And I heard it just a little while ago. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh my God. Somewhere in Detroit, <laughs> when I first heard it, I don't remember exactly where I was, but wow, mm. that song is that? moving. Was that? 1963 is when he wrote that song. Wow. Oh, is it me? Well, I was in elementary What's school, that? I think. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's the question again? Where were you when you first heard A Change Is Gonna Come by Sam? Oh, gosh, yeah. I was at Michigan State. I was in my, I think, starting my junior year because I, I graduated in 66. 
but I was at, at Michigan State. That's where I was. Wow, wow. What about you, DeFrance? Where were you? Uh, I probably was in South Bend, Indiana, because my uncles, they used to sing a lot of songs. Um, we go upstairs. Mm -hmm. My grandmother, her, I seen, she came up there maybe five times in her entire life. <laughs> it was like our play area. And she um, we go upstairs there, and they would sing a cappella. And so, and so that's when I heard that song the first time. And then when, they, when that Malcolm X movie came out, I heard a lot more then. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Dr. Max movie with yes. Denzel Washington? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Denzel Washington. Which is a great movie. They should have got more accolades for that it movie. Sure mm -hmm. is. Uh, the, sure the clothing, is. Uh, the music. Oh, yes. You know? Oh, yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, but I, I, I believe it was upstairs at my grandmother's house. Yeah, in South Bend, Indiana, when I first heard heard that song. <laughs> well, and for people who don't know, South Bend, in Indiana, is where Notre Dame plays. That's where Notre Dame yeah. is located, <laughs> and that's where they play. Mm. All right. Well, that, that, my, let me tell you. Let me, let me tell you my, my, my view of this. I, as a little kid, was a huge Sam Cooke fan. I can, mm -hmm. yeah. I can tell you that. Every song he ever put out, right? Correct. I was on it. But see, I wouldn't sing in front of people because I was shy. Right? And my mom caught me singing his songs one day, and she made me, you know, go, just go join the choir. She said, Chris, you have a good time. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I said, Chris, you got to move. You got to move. So uh, I started singing in the choir. But that song, I think I was in seventh grade, and I heard it on the radio in Cincinnati, because I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. And it stopped me, man. I said, wait a second. That's Sam again. That's, that's one of his songs, you know? Mm. And I tell you, that that song hit me, man. That's, it hit me. It hit me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes, it's and, uh, awesome. It was fabulous. Awesome. Everything about, you know, yeah. the orchestration was beautiful, you know, the, yeah. the uh, every position and yeah. his and his treatment, you know, his, mm. his, his mm. Right. right. The song was so great. You know, that's what I love. Yeah. Uh, we did and, shows with Sam Cooke. I remember um, my parents and I seeing them. Uh, mm -hmm. At the Club Harlem in Atlantic City, she was on the show with Sam Cooke. Wow. He and opened Norma for him. Was one of the dancers. Mm -hmm. Norma, mm -hmm. no, that's right. She opened for mm -hmm. Sam Cooke. Yeah, at the Club wow. Harlem, way that's back then. Do you do you, know, know, do you not know? Do you not know how much a legacy you all have sitting right here on the Sherrod Show? It's incredible. These are icons. I hope you all appreciate this moment. You all who are watching this evening, because these are people who've paved the way. Heck, you all were conceived off their music. You wouldn't be here if you didn't hear their music. And I was, I was Don't teasing. blame it on us, though. <laughs> <laughs> on the bully. I was teasing Chris when he was on the show. <laughs> but so many people were conceived off the Isley Brothers. Let's not yeah. get started. Let's not get started. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, man. Man. Oh, oh, man. Man. <laughs> <laughs> and he wrote most of it. But anyway, um, <laughs> we're going to take your final <laughs> voice. <laughs> Thank you all so much. We're so honored to have you on. We're going to take your final thoughts on Mary to give her a great send off. We'll start off with, she with you, Sherry. Great send off for Mary. Our final thoughts. Wow. I don't know. It's hard. Um, when I watched Jean Kern's concert last uh, Sunday, halfway through, she was singing all these um, wonderful songs from the past. And all of a sudden, I just broke down and just started sobbing uncontrollably. And uh, I just couldn't help it. I think I just needed, it was cathartic for me. I needed to get it out. But uh, I'll always remember Mary fondly. Um, I drink champagne because of Mary. <laughs> so I have a glass of champagne, I do a toast to my dear friend, Mary. And uh, Mary was a classy lady. And um, I'll always remember her. I'll never forget yes. her. And, and my prayers for her daughter, Turkess and son, little Pedro and, and Willie. And brother Roosevelt and sister Kathy, um, my love goes out to you and my prayers go out mm -hmm. to you. But uh, Mary, you will always be Queen Mary, as Suse said. <laughs> <laughs> Not the least. Mm -hmm. yeah, so Queen wonderful. Mary, mm -hmm. Queen Supreme Mary, you will always That's right. be. Nobody could ever take that away from you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And you, Suze? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it made me think of a song that we did called We Should Be Closer Together. And it mm. it turned out to be a duet, which was a strange, you know, it just happened that way. But 
I can remember even now it gives me chills because it was such a an emotional song you know and that that's Mary in a nutshell you know she was a very emotional very caring person who cared so deeply about making an effect and on people's lives and then for her to have dreamed of her career and and actually achieved it I know that was important to her I know it meant everything to her you know and she was a she was a person who was so full of decision you know direction focus and all of that wrapped up with a whole lot of caring you know being in show business is a service position you serve people you know you bring them joy you uplift them you take them to another level from their lives and little moments 30 seconds can change someone's life i have seen mary wilson stay when everyone else was leaving because she mm -hmm. felt i owe it to my fans and they adore her mm -hmm. still i've mm -hmm. had so i've had thousands and thousands literally thousands of notes because people were affected by her you know she changed their life mm -hmm. That's all there is. You can't yeah. ask for much more than that. You know? Wow. That's wow. Right. Thank you. And what about you, Chris? I was just thinking that, uh, you know, very few people get the uh, opportunity uh, to right. touch the world like, like she did and like the Supremes did, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think, you know, maybe if you weren't around, you know, when uh, they were at their heyday, I think you missed a lot because mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I certainly learned a lot watching you know, the group and watching her. Um, we having a bit hard time hearing you, Chris. Oh, oh yeah. Sorry. I, I, sorry. I, I, I learned a lot, you know, watching watching them. And how they, how they, uh, they were saying before, you know, how they uh, presented themselves, you know, all mm -hmm. that kind of things. You could learn so much from the, just watching the Supremes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and watching her, you know, and um, I just, I just feel if you, if you missed, if you missed that era, you should go back and, and you know, review some yeah. of it. Yeah. Go back and look at some of those, you know, the TV shows or where, yeah. wherever, wherever they were appearing, because uh, they, they were really. Uh, she was really a good example for. for yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. They're all there on YouTube. You mm -hmm. know. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. That is correct. As well as the show, as well as the episode where um, she's on the Sherrod show as well. You want to check it out on YouTube. It's going to also be airing as a special tribute on Essence Television as well. Oh. De France, what about you, sir? Wow, um, I miss. I, I, I wanted to know that. I'm glad. I'm glad I met her. I'm glad she did what she did by joining the Supremes and and making the world know that what a lady group should, should be like, you know. And of course, we're gonna miss her, but we, but like you said, with the videos and, and the memories, oh, yeah. uh, it makes it a little bit easier yeah. to keep going, yeah. you know. And you know, and I'll be thinking about her, you know, and. Yeah. Uh, the smiles and 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 it will help me to to know how to present myself when I like you said when I'm with my fans when I'm around people to be yeah. professional to be, be kind oh, you know yeah. and, and be ready you know yeah yeah that's 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 what I would do that's what I'm gonna do very good and what about you yeah. closing this out oh you know I really love that lady. Um, I just remember being a kid watching the Supremes and my mom always telling me, you know, you look like Mary, you know, and I, oh, I do. And, the, for, you know, to be singing with the group now, I'm not Mary, but, but anyway, you know, I have not had the opportunity to meet her as much as I would like, but when I did meet her, she was very, very warm very warm so it was like put put her arms around you and you give you a hug and this beautiful smile and mary was a people person yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 wonderful wonderful well, um, i want to say to you all thank you sherry payne for being coming back on again on the show to share your thoughts as well as to uh 
do be a part of this wonderful tribute to uh, Mary Wilson. Always have great fun when you stop by on the show. She still is 35 and looks every bit of it. Wonderful. I'll be 77 in November. Oh, my goodness. We don't believe that. We don't take people lying on the show now, Sherry. We don't like that. We don't like that. And Suze Green, this lady has a smile that will light up a room, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Thank so you. Beautiful. So inside and out. And you can tell she loves drinking Chardonnay. She's just a classy, just so <laughs> <laughs> I like the oh, food. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, she doesn't drink. So, so I don't say. I'm happy. <laughs> what can I say? So wonderful and classy. Thank you so much Thank again you. for stopping by and being on the Sherrod Show. Chris, the gentleman and the scholar has been making such great music. One man said, I only plan to have one key until I heard you all's music. Now I got six. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate you stopping by the show. You are such a blessing and your music will live on, um, on and on. Thank you so much. And DeFrance, the man, the man himself whose dad has set paved the way for millions of people uh, with the one, some of the greatest music we were talking about. Oh, yeah. And his son comes along and keeps carrying it torch mm -hmm. with his fascinating, awesome music. Yeah. If you don't know, just look at the originals. This man can blow. And the funny thing about it, I laugh at it. He said he's from Chicago, so am I. And his accent gives it away. Just listen to that shot. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much, sir, for being on the show again. We really You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And then Joyce, mm -hmm. thank you so much. First time being on the show. And she has her hair looking spectacular. That's how you represent the Sherrod Show. She has her hair looking <laughs> spectacular. Hair. Thank, you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And for you, Mary, um, rest well in paradise. We thank you so much for what you've given yes. us for the brief time that you were here. Now may you bring that to the angels in heaven who are smiling mm -hmm. with you. We thank you so much, Mary. Your music Amen. will have forever live on. In the meantime, Sherrod, I'm Sherrod. Um, check out our episode on Essence Television. On our next episode of Sherrod Show, we will have Mr. David Allen Greer, as well as Tommy Davidson on the show. I don't know how I'm going to get through that interview. I'm going to be laughing so much. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, you pray for me. But in the meantime, enjoy your Sunday. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. God bless. You all. God bless. Bye -bye. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Sherrod Show. If you like additional information about our episodes, you can log on to thesharadshow.com. You can also check us out on social media, like us on Facebook, look at our YouTube videos, subscribe to our newsletter at essencetelevisionnetworks at gmail.com. If you would like to get information to the host, Sherrod, you can email him at thesharadshow.com. Once again, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week.